you're thinking of changing your website hosting provider to something more reliable but feel intimidated by the migration process, don't you worry. It's a lot easier than you think and in this video I'll walk you through every single step of the way so you can enjoy Hostinger's premium services. So let's quickly go over what you will need to make it happen. First, you will need to set up a web hosting account with Hostinger and a domain name that can be attached to your site. Once you're done with all of that, it's time to back up your website. So go to your current host control panel and locate the option to download all of your website files. You'll want both your website files and your databases if your site has them, of course. And if your website is hosted on cPanel, note down your login credentials because you will need those. Once you've taken care of all of that, you can proceed to the actual website migration. And by the way, you can follow the timestamps in this video to jump to the migration method depending on your website type. Most of the methods below will start with you logging into each panel, opening the websites and then websites list section, and then clicking add website, choosing migrate website, and proceeding from there. Oh, and once you submit your request and migration is complete, you'll need to connect your domain name to the right place. I'll show you how to do that at the end of the video, so definitely stick around for that. First, Next up, let's talk about migrating a WordPress website to Hostinger. I'll start with this because it's the most popular CMS, and let me do this with you. So I'll assume you've got your backups ready from where we left off at the end of the preparation section, then click the upload WordPress website backup button to just continue. Wait until this screen appears, click upload and choose your website's backup in a .zip file and your .wordpress or .sql database. Wait until the files are uploaded and keep in mind that it might just take a while here. And once that's done, just click next. Verify the files you've uploaded, a temporary domain name will will be assigned to you also, which you'll be able to change later on. Then click submit request and that is basically it. The migration will take up to 24 hours. Now, if you've previously hosted your website on cPanel, the process is a bit more evolved here. So let me take you through the steps. So let me do this with you once again. So first, let's go back to where we left off at the end of the preparation section. And when the new page opens, enter your domain name, then click next and choose the cPanel and WHM option. When prompted, enter your login, URL and credentials, then just click next. And just like with WordPress, your site will be assigned a temporary domain and you'll be able to change it afterwards. Then just click submit request and that's it. The migration will be completed within the next 24 hours. Now, if you've got a different kind of PHP based website, that is one that's neither WordPress nor cPanel, you can move it just as easily. So let me show you how. So we'll be continuing from where we left off at the preparation part of the video once again. Enter your website's URL into the field and click next. Now choose the other control panel option and click next once again. If your website is currently live, enter the login URL and your credentials. If the website is offline, that's not a problem basically. Just upload your site's files and database to a folder on one of the supported platforms you can see on the screen right here and make sure the link you add is accessible and then leave that link in the additional notes field. When you're done, just click next. Now just verify the information and you'll be assigned a temporary domain that you can easily change later on once everything is done. Then hit submit request and sit back as the migration process will be complete in up to 24 hours or so. Okay, so you might be thinking, what do you do after you submit the request? Well, you'll need to wait until the website migration is done before actually taking care of the remaining tasks. So you'll also receive an update over email when that exactly happens. But you can also see the status of your request by checking out this link right here. I'll add it to the description below as well. And just hang tight until you see the status has changed to complete. In very rare cases, the migration status might show as rejected. So if that happens, check out this article right here that's on the screen that explains what to do if that happens. And you'll find the link for this article in the description of the video as well. Now, when the migration is completed successfully, the first thing you should do is verify if your website works correctly. You can do it with skip DNS. To use the tool, you'll need the IP of your hosting plan and your temporary domain. Let me show you how you can find both of them on HPanel. So first, go back to the websites list page and click the dashboard button next to your newly migrated website. 
Now you can choose the hosting plan on the panel on the left and click plan details. The line called access your website at is your temporary domain which we'll need for skip DNS. Meanwhile, website IP address contains the IP of your hosting plan and note both of them down before returning to the tool. Finally, enter the details on skip DNS and the only two fields you'll need to fill in here are for the stuff we just obtained. So just get to it. And also leave the other two drop down menus unchanged and click go. Skip DNS will generate a preview link of your website and click it and test your website operation. If there's a problem, verify that you uploaded the correct files during the migration and just try again. And the last thing to do is to connect your domain name to Hostinger. And to do that, return to your website's dashboard on HPanel and it should recognize the fact that you've got a temporary domain with a notification near the top and just click change domain. If you don't see that, click the button labeled as domain. Now, if your domain was registered at Hostinger, all you need to do is enter it in the field selected from the drop down menu that appears right here and then hit next. However, if you did register your domain with someone else, you will need to log into your registrar's platform and update the name server information right there and look for something like DNS record management zone. Once you're there, you'll need to delete the old name servers and enter the new ones provided by Hostinger. You can find them in the same place where you got the hosting plan IP address earlier in the video. Remember when we got through that. Once done, return to the HPanel domain setup, tick the box to confirm that you've changed the records and just hit finish. And by the way, guys, it's possible your registrar may not let you change the DNS records. And if that's the case, don't worry because pointing your domain to Hostinger is still possible. Just check Check out the guide in this support article, which you'll find the link to in the description down below as well. And that covers it all, guys. If you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comment section down below the video, and I will be really glad to help you out. Also, if you found the video helpful, drop us a like and consider subscribing to Hosting Your Academy for more helpful videos just like this one in the future. Also, if you're facing any trouble with your website or just want to step up your website creation game, make sure to visit our YouTube channel for more interesting content that you can check out right now. Now, thank you so much for watching and good luck on your online journey.